Hello, in this video I want to show the uh, discrete Fourier transform being used to uh, buy and sell stock to uh, and, and describe the uh, stock market price changes with the uh, discrete Fourier transform waves. The uh, transform is kind of like a regression analysis to where the prices, 128 prices, are curve fitted to where the prices uh, match the sum of the waves. And of course the waves go from different frequencies and phase shifts and different amplitudes. And uh, so I'm going to show you this and what I have found. Uh, the uh, black line is the price movement. And I just want to, and remember that black line then is the sum of all these other waves. And you can see then that the red wave, which is the uh, smallest amplitude, is the has the maximum amplitude, and the, and it has the uh, has largest frequency. So that's uh, I mean smallest frequency. That, that frequency is four thousand and fifty, and that uh, the chart is uh, each grid line is one minute. So it's a one minute chart of uh, the uh, volatile, three times volatile S&P. So, uh, and uh, the price ends right here. The, the reason is that uh, I want to get at least one cycle of the wave, largest uh, wave, and that's the smallest frequency. I'm sorry, the red one is the smallest frequency. And that's uh, 4,050, and it has the largest uh, period. And the uh, next one is the, I believe, the blue one. It's uh, 12,150, and maybe it's the green one. The green one is 8,100. So, yeah, that's twice the uh, frequency of the red one. And uh, those frequencies are determined by the... Uh, uh, discrete Fourier transform, the, uh, and it's all set up by the for 128 uh, stock prices, and then we get six for the 128 prices we get 64 uh, waves that add up to be the uh, stock prices, and it matches every stock price uh, every minute stock price exactly. It's uh, very similar to, uh, to say, the uh, a regression analysis to where you have a polynomial you're fitting and you determine what the coefficients of the uh, polynomial are to fit the data. And uh, you just have to remember that in this one, we're fitting waves with different frequencies and different uh, amplitudes and different phase shifts. And... Um, the red one is the dominant wave. And uh, let's go back. Let me go and uh, go back in time here. Let's see when this one starts. This one ends at uh, 11.13 at 14.12. Uh, so... Let me erase some here. Let's go back on 11.13 in the morning. Let's start at 11. Uh, let's start at uh, 11.54. I'll just erase this. Um, it's set up to where I can go back out and get uh, the data sheet that that came from. So if I do a, a update, you know, if I do a... a Forward, go forward one. Let's see if I can get rid of that. All right, go forward one. Uh, it's uh, loading to where that point in time is. 
And so happened, you can see now the red wave is coming down. But here you can see though, as the uh, red wave came down and the price was also coming down. And here when the red wave went up, the price went up. And here we're starting the price coming down, but notice now you have to read this the red one being the highest amplitude is going to be the dominant one but what's the blue one as that blue one goes down the stock also came down so that kind of makes it wiggle around the the price wiggle around the red wave but usually its amplitude is so much larger than the others that it's dominant so you can see you can see that red wave in this price action. And uh, the reason I carried it on out, so if you wanted that to predict the, for, uh, the future, the, uh, uh, the sine waves don't change, but as the price moves in time, every, every minute there's an update, the waves change a little bit. But uh, usually, you can uh, gauge that if uh, the, some of the waves is going up, that the price will also go up. Now this uh, is a, a line that is the uh, sum of the uh, more important waves, you might say, the higher amplitudes. It leaves out a lot of the smaller ones. And... Uh, you can see that the price follows that line very close. The black, big black line is the actual prices, and I call it the reduced sum, just because the number of waves have been reduced in it. And uh, it really, the price, so I would say, expect that price to keep going up, and then turn down, go up, and turn down. And what you really want to watch is now your timing may be off uh, how you're getting your data to come in. You want to be sure not to be uh, long when that goes right here because it's going to be a sudden drop, very sudden drop. And that's, and that's the sum of the uh, waves doing that, which is kind of remarkable that you can have these uh, sudden drops in the market just from the change in wave. You can see here, right here this there seems to be a cluster of smaller waves and it seems to be following that cluster. And also definitely following this big blue wave. And there's a purple wave in there too. You can see this uh, kind of large right here. So Let's see, over here you can see all of them are coming down, plus the big ridge coming down, and see how the sudden the price drops. Of course, that's the same one. Uh, it starts to repeat itself, so go out any further, you're just seeing the same thing. It's, uh, so uh, a set of 164 waves uh, is pretty much uh, it. And it just changes the uh, constants to where... Uh, it matches the price for those uh, 128 data points exactly. Now let me move forward in time. I just go forward one minute at a time, and we can watch it. Hardly see you. See, you notice the black line moved up to where that peak is. Now let's see what happens. Now this is just what you would see during the day as you advanced one minute at a time. As you can see, I erased all the data that's coming in, so that's exactly what you see during the day. Except to go a little bit faster here. You see how that black line is following the uh, maroon one? And the maroon one is changing. So, but here, let's see if it goes up. It went up, see the black went up that maroon line. I want to see the big price drop. Let's go keep going until we get the big price drop here. So you can see your, your forecasting is doing pretty good. There are times it seems like the investors take over and the, uh, 
the, uh, pri the, the time doesn't advance along the curve. It just seems to be stuck in one point. And you see that starting down. Today it followed the uh, curve pretty good. But you see now th those curves are bouncing around as it uh, refits the uh, waves, changes the uh, parameters of the wave. That'd be the amplitude, the the frequency, and the well the frequency stay the same, but the uh, phase shift. Now the seas there went up, and I don't believe the marine line showed that price going up. Now it's off the marine line now, see? And then it came back to it. And went below the marine line. The uh, Remember, the marine line isn't all of the waves. Now, the... Uh, the uh, black line is actually the sum of the sine waves, all of the sine waves. So it's a pretty good uh, estimate of the price. If I would put the price, actual price in there, you couldn't see any difference. And actually, it's a, um, I might say it is a normalized uh, price. One thing that is changing is the center price. Let's watch it now. We haven't seen it hit that big down, uh, dip yet. It seems like the lines keep changing where it's uh, avoiding. It keeps putting that dip out into the future, but we don't want to be long when that hits. So where do you say that? This might be a good place right there to go short. Let's see. I do have that uh, black lines where it, that, that is the current time on the graph. So it makes it easy where that, uh, where that vertical black line intersects the maroon line is where the uh, current time is. When it gets down into those other waves, it's a little bit hard to distinguish the waves. And see that uh, big dip keeps moving out. And now we've got another little wave and it was introduced in there. See how that's changing? Uh, but you just have to remember, it is, a, it is similar to a regression analysis to where the sum of those waves is equal to the price. Of, and uh, the waves uh, deter, uh, determine the add up to be the prices exactly. Now you notice how the amplitude there, uh, where the dip is, is, keeps going up. I can always guarantee that eventually it will go down. You can see that the big red sine wave is going down now. And eventually it's contributing so much to the sum that the price will start to drop. So it's just a matter of time if it keeps moving out along the curve. Now, did you notice there that uh, that the number of uh, waves, small waves, over to the big dip? Now, the big dip was actually changed there a little bit. It didn't go in. We've got an extra wave in there again. But at least you can see it, and you got a few minutes to respond. Uh, but uh, it was so enlightening to me to see what actually causes the stock market uh, price changes. That big dip is still just staying out in front. And it seemed like it just got further out in front just soon. And the, you notice it doesn't seem to be moving along the red curve as fast. And that may be investors' uh, sentiment uh, causing that. I 
trying to keep going here, but the video is getting awfully long. Tell you what I do. I'm going to pause the video and advance to where it starts going down. 